I think so. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Appreciate it. All right. <clears throat> good morning, everyone. I just want to take a few minutes here, introduce myself. My name is Scott Johnson. I am a technical a specialist with Autodesk. My background is in construction management. I received my degree in Washington University in St. Louis and spent several years working in a variety of different construction areas in the St. Louis area. I now live out in the East Coast up in the Portland, Maine area where I work with a lot of the resellers like the PPI group, but uh, as well as owners who are interested in implementing new technologies such as Navisworks or Revit or Civil 3D, any of the different applications that are out there. This webcast is the third in a series on Autodesk Navisworks and today's session will focus on 
planning for transportation related projects. So we'll look at ways to plan more effectively in road as well as bridge construction. And I think you'll see that a lot of this is geared more towards bridges, just um, with a lot of the more complexity there and the, the logistics of trying to put together a bridge. This is where Navisworks really allows a lot more flexibility with, with being able to sequence and being able to identify any potential errors or emissions with the process of putting the bridge together. So some of the key areas that uh, Navisworks helps with is um, looking at better visualization of the construction site or uh, working within a constricted working area. So this helps with the safety of the site as well as being able to understand the efficient laydown areas and equipment areas. So being able to prototype this whole process allows us to identify not only you know the best area but also be able to factor in uh, you know things such as risk and find ways to mitigate that and that in turn leads to a safer secure site. We'll also look at um, taking the concept of safety further, how to plan around live traffic conditions. Um, you know, one of the number one issues with working in, in a roadway is that you have a lot of, you have an active construction site right ne next to possibly a highway or, you know, even interstate of sorts. So there's always a safety factor that needs to be taken into account when you're working with that. So we'll also look at some different what-if scenarios and decide how these methods can be, you know, presented to the owner to, pre um, to create the best process for, for putting this uh, this project together. We'll also look at uh, ways to place equipment or orchestrate the site logistics more efficiently. We talked about that when you're working within tight conditions. Uh, space is a premium, so do you do you uh, have equipment stored off site and bring it on on site as necessary, or is it a possibility where you try to do more of a just-in-time delivery where equipment is brought or materials are brought just as they're necessary as they're needed. And finally, we'll look at using Navisworks to model to convey a greater amount of information that will ultimately increase the level of understanding for all the stakeholders on the project. So first thing I'm going to do is change over to Navisworks here. And we're going to do a quick overview of what Navisworks is. Like I said, this is the third webcast, so if you followed along in the last two, um, you've, you've probably gotten a good understanding of some of the different features. But real quickly, we'll talk a little bit about what, um, what, what the power of Navisworks entails within it. So the first thing is file aggregation. Navisworks can bring in over 40 different file types. And on screen, you're seeing, uh, you can see the, the different types of file extensions it brings in. So not only does it work with its own proprietary Navisworks format, it brings in pretty much any of the different design formats, uh, even uh, some of the visualization aspects like 3D Studio Max. Um, you can see there's, um, you know, we have MicroStation from some of our competing products, but also laser scan data. And uh, for those of you who sat in the, on the webcast last month, we talked about how we can leverage laser scan data from a civil standpoint, when we're working with existing conditions, having laser scanned is, is very crucial. And Navisworks is able to pull that information in, then we're able to overlay the, the model that we're currently working on, and then we can use that for things such as clash detection or be able to work around that when we look at 4D simulation. So the file aggregation is one of the, cre the key components of Navisworks, being able to bring in all these different file formats. Um, the other thing I talked a little bit about was clash detection. And we'll talk a little bit about this when it comes, in, when you know, when, when we get into farther into the the demo. But really, being able to uh, not only clash detect different types of geometry, but we can also look for soft clashes. So, in addition to looking for hard interferences between maybe a, a concrete uh, pier and maybe some kind of a, a you know a, a utility of sorts, we can also look for clearances. So this not only becomes useful for constructability, but also for safety. If we know we have a certain uh, zone that we want to try to make sure people stay outside of, uh, you know, we can create this, we can specify clearance, and any object that gets within that, that zone will trigger a clash. And like I said, that can be for anything from, from constructability issues. If we need to have a certain amount of space for, uh, for accessing a, or maintenance of equipment, we can specify that. Or more importantly from safety. So if we have a active construction site next to a, a highway, we can specify that there needs to be a buffer zone and that any U workers or any equipment that gets within that triggers a clash. We can go back and, and reevaluate our plan on how we're going to move equipment around on site. And finally, the last thing I want to talk a little bit about is 4D simulation. And you've probably heard this, this word before, but really what 4D refers to is taking a 3D model and introducing the fourth element. In this case, this is time. So we're able to link out to an external schedule uh, database of sorts. And this could be something such as Microsoft Project or even Primavera Project Planner, P3 or P4, P5, P6, depending on which, which uh, version you're currently using. And putting this together, we can now assemble the building in time as it would take place based off of the 
based off the tasks that are currently in that schedule. And this is useful as it allows us to look for any errors or omissions or even scheduling logic errors within the schedule and go back and make those changes. And the whole point of all of this, of being able to you know, put all this information together and look for clashes and, and figure out the way it goes together, is to really prototype the whole process. We want to be able to understand any conflicts, design those out, or take care of those issues ahead of time. And then when we get on site, when the steel shows up and the trucks show up and all the workers show up, everything can go, to get, can go together much more effectively. So with Navisworks, we're prototyping the whole process from the design all the way through the end of the, process, the construction site, ironing out all those issues, and then we're going to go out and actually build that. So um, what I want to do next here is talk a little bit about how this is useful for roads. So in addition to some of the information I just quickly talked about, when we're looking at road projects, some of the main issues are uh, you know, there's a lot of different overlays. We might have some underground utilities, we might have existing roads, there might be some new information, uh, especially if you're working with an a uh, application like Civil 3D where you have lots of different components in there. We can overlay all those different components and create this composite model. And then now with this model, we can use some of the navigation tools in Navisworks and allows us to, to really move around the model, understand that. We can throw in some scale figures to really start to introduce the a scale to this particular project. Now what's un unique about Navisworks is right now I'm showing just a, just the person, uh, you know, a construction worker of sorts. Oh, here we'll go up and make this look a little more efficient. We'll bring in a... Um... Alright, they got a hard hat. Now they're official. Um, in addition to using the human, we can also bring in other avatars. You can create an avatar, so you could show a crane driving, you can maybe show a dump truck. And being able to bring this kind of scale figure in and now have this interact with the model really allows you to understand, you know, how is this equipment going to be brought to site. So just using some of the basic navigation tools, we're able to, to move around the site. Uh, I can turn on things such as gravity and collision detection, and now this, this particular model, well, your user, will, will will go up and down ramps and slopes. Um, if they're inside of a building, they'd walk up and down stairs. But as I mentioned, we can change out this avatar into any number of different different um, components. And then that can become useful for, for trying to simulate maybe having equipment being brought to and from the site. Um, as I mentioned, we can also bring in underground utilities. Um, in this particular model, there aren't any uh, main ones to show, but using the clash detection, we could look for uh, maybe a proposed utility versus existing utilities and how, how those might impact one another and being able to overlay those, go in and look for hard clashes, we can quickly iron those out, make a dis, uh, you know, design decision or change within that and then go back and then rerun this clash test. So when we go on site, we're, we can, they're guaranteed. Um, now out there on, on the west coast, I was out there about uh, six months ago working on working on um, the Alaska Way Vida project and this is a uh, um, what I can say about it is that they were very interested in using Navisworks to, for this specific issue where they had existing utilities versus new utilities and they were able to overlay those and look for specific clashes and issues within that and then as well as um, looking at other areas where they could try to maximize the efficiency such as uh, you know road closures and, and some other areas in there. But um, looking at it from the road standpoint obviously you know it's probably some of the basic transportation projects that are out there and especially with the new stimulus bill being passed we're probably going to see a lot more of this um, with some of the shovel ready projects that are ready to go but really where Navisworks comes into play and very effectively is when we're looking at bridge work I'm going to go ahead and change tabs here and I want to talk a little bit about how we can leverage this for um, working within a bridge section okay here we go so what we're looking at now and I'll just give you a couple seconds to catch up on screen this is a proposed overpass that's going to go over an existing highway. And one of the th things we talked about was when you're working with this, there's obviously, you know, you have cars zipping by probably at 60, 70 miles an hour. We want to make sure that the workers are in a position that there's not going to be, you know, any, any potential for, um, you know, for, for injury or, or death, for example. But we can also start using this as a tool to start figuring out where the items are going to be laid down. So what I typically will do working with customers is, plan out what you know is going to be there. So in this case, you know, we have the terrain in place, we have the roads, but now put something there that identifies that. And the easiest way to do this is to create a volume of sorts that represents the area defined by that traffic. So as I zoom down here now, you can see we have these boxes. And basically, it's about 17 feet tall, so it takes into account most of the 
um, you know, taller semi trucks that would be passing by this. But this becomes an area that is, is a no entry zone. So when we start figuring out how to place equipment around here, we can make sure that the swing of our crane doesn't impact this or you know, when we start putting lay down areas that we're not getting too close to these zones. And these are areas too that when we use clash detection, we can specify this as one of the objects and that anything that penetrates that or gets within a certain clearance will trigger a clash. And we can now use this information to go back and maybe remap out where we're going to put our lay down areas or so forth. The other thing that's really useful about this is with these tight conditions, being able to plan accordingly. So as I become more of a plan view on here, I want to try to keep equipment as close as possible so we're not having to move back and forth, but at the same time, because of the tight conditions of this, I need to make sure that it's placed properly so we're not having to constantly move things back and forth. And some of the ways that I can do this is I can simply um, bring in a different equipment and try to place it on site and kind of see if that what the results are. So in a way, um, you know, we're just drag and dropping equipment into Navisworks. We're able to move it around on site and try to figure this out. And this becomes part of your essential planning process. Typically, um, you know, this is done by, you know, the logistics plan is typically done on 2D and maybe you, you draw it out or you have some little cardboard cutouts. This is the same concept, but the nice thing about this is that we're working in a 3D environment. So now we can see it not only in plan, but we can see it in elevation as well as uh, maybe a perspective view as well. So in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and bring in, I have um, a crane here I'm just going to drop in. And uh, one of the things you'll see as I move down here, and I can study this crane, figure out first of all, is this going to be tall enough to bring components up to the area? If not, in Navisworks, I can simply click on the crane, and if I right click up on the toolbar, there's an area here called Object Manipulation. And now with this, I can uh, simply click on the move icon and I can move this around. I can say, well, maybe it needs to be moved over to, you know, to the side as possible. So all I'm doing is just moving it around, but in the process of doing that, I can move around, I can look at it, like I said, in different views and really start to understand, you know, is this the best placement for this particular item? Um, maybe this is too big of a crane, maybe we need to go with a smaller crane or Maybe the crane is fine, but you know we need to maybe do a partial road closure on the median to accommodate this or, or onto the side. And so these are the kind of decisions that you can start effectively making just by planning this out. As I mentioned, uh, you know we can look at the crane possibility here, but when we start getting into you know adding other elements such as you know cement trucks, the same process. We can now I'll move around to the other side here and start figuring out you know when we're going to be casting some of these piers that we need to be able to get equipment in and out of here. So this is where Navisworks becomes very useful, and as I mentioned, being able to bring in all these different file formats, uh, these, some of these models that you're looking at were created in SketchUp, which is a free application that Google gives away. Um, you can go out to uh, the Google 3D catalog, or 3D warehouse, I guess they call it, and a lot of these you can download for free, and they're scale models that you can just simply drag and drop in into Navisworks and move them around. And they give you the ability to now really get a true understanding of you know, some of the different logistics within the site. And as I mentioned, you can see we still have, have these areas defined by the active traffic zones. So this is some of the initial, initial planning that would typically go on for creating an overpass like this. And uh, like I said, I typically like to bring in a couple of different components, move them around, try to figure out what's going to be the best placement for that. And maybe it's, it's multiple components, maybe it's just one large one. And when we get into looking at uh, some of the 4D aspects, you'll see how this becomes really useful. And then we can also talk about different construction methods and how we can leverage some of these drag and drop features in Navisworks to accommodate uh, different methods altogether. So what we've talked about so far is, is some of the basic transportation projects looking at you know the, the general navigation tools, but ways that we can clash some of these different components together. And I talked about bringing in some non-model elements that define these zones. For example, these, these kind of uh, magenta colored masses that represent the traffic areas. When we get into larger projects, we can map out the path of components as well by using these, these volumes. And this becomes useful when you're trying to figure out if we have a, like, either a large crane or maybe it's a large site. Um, later on, we're going to look at a larger bridge project which uses a series of box girders that have been constructed off-site. We can now leverage this, this massing as a tool that defines not only the path, but the, the space that that particular item will take to get from point A to point B. And anything along the way that might interfere within that zone can trigger this clash. In this case, we're looking at just from, uh, you know, from, an active, from a safety standpoint, but now we can leverage this for additional uses, such as you know, making sure that the pathway is clear. We're not going to hit overhead lights or, or, 
proper uh, trees. And once again, being able to laser scan some of that data makes it much easier. You can go out and shoot a couple different scans and have them geospatially referenced, drop them into the model, and now you have a, a virtual model that has a, a true as-built, but now you can overlay this with this proposed overpass that we're looking at. So one of the other things I want to talk a little bit about is going into the 4D concept. And this is, I think, very useful. Um, you know, it's, it's been used in the construction industry as a means to really understand how a project is put together. In this case, we can, we can use the same kind of information to determine how this, this overpass will be put together and figure out if there's going to be any technical issues that we need to try to work out ahead of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up the Timeliner. And um, real quickly, I'll talk a little bit about it. So Timeliner is one of the modules inside of Navisworks Manage that allows us to link out to an external database. And uh, first thing I should probably mention is there's, there's actually four versions of Navisworks. There's the free viewer, which is called Freedom, and any user can download that and can work with uh, both DWF files as well as published NWD files, which are the, one of the outputs of Navisworks. We can, there's also uh, what's called Navisworks Review, Simulate, and Manage, and those are the three main versions. And the, the primary difference between that is that um, Manage, which is one we're looking at today, has not only clash, ha, not only the, the 4D, but it also has the clash detection. Uh, review just gives you the basic navigation interface that I was showing you earlier, and then Simulate gives us the navigation interface plus the ability to, to work with the 4D models. So there's, there's four, four primary versions of Navisworks, but like I said, for today we're, we're focusing on Manage, where we're looking at utilizing all these different modules. Done is um, I've linked over to a Primavera project and I'm able to bring in the task name but as well as the start and end dates and it, we could be we could leverage Microsoft project we could look at MPX formats or uh, working with maybe a European company they might be using Asta Power project which is another scheduling application but we're able to link out to this database and not only can we um, you know as I mentioned bring in the start and end times, but we're bringing in the task names as well. So if I were to open up the schedule, I would basically see um, a bar chart which is representing what we're representing these tasks at these start and end dates. The nice thing about Navisworks is that we can bring over that information and then to the model. And this gives us the ability to, to really understand the schedule in much more detail. When we're looking at a, a bar chart or a Gantt chart, it's sometimes difficult to maybe understand relationships between the different trades, you know, where one stops and ends, and being able to create more of a visual interface to that really helps with the understanding of the schedule. So I've brought over the schedule into Navisworks, and what I've done is I've, I've broken down the, the elements on into construction-specific tasks. So one of the things that Navisworks can do is, is, is break it, them all down into what are called search and selection sets. And if I open those up, you'll see I have a series of different elements on and when I click on that, it highlights a specific element on screen. And uh, the thing to mention here is that when 